Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic, and today we're going to be looking at something that you guys have actually put me onto. So, after Annie's last set of fights, we completely destroyed the YOLO drive, and I got a couple of uh, recommendations to check out something that is called Tangential Drive. Uh, that's mostly being used in Brazil at the moment. So today what I want to do is have a look at what Tangential Drive is, how to set it all up, and then we're going to bolt it on into Boris, my 1.7 kilo behemoth of a test platform, and we're going to see if this Tangential Drive system will actually hold up to uh, a massive load. So, what is tangential drive? Well, on the face of it, it's quite a simple concept. And also, I would probably call it a friction drive more than I would call it a tangential drive. But both of them would be fairly accurate as names. So, the way this works is you take a wheel free floating on an axle like this one is, and then you mount a section of metal to your brushless motor and then you connect the two. You basically put the two pieces in tangent, so the metal off of your brushless motor touches onto your wheel, and then by spinning the metal, you can spin the wheel with a massive gear reduction, essentially. So the whole point of this is to be able to get a fairly substantial gear reduction of your brushless motor to your wheel without having to rely on gearing stages, because gearing stages, you have to work out modes of teeth, you have to then be able to uh, design and manufacture that correctly, uh, which either means cutting it out of steel, which is really heavy, or working out some other way of doing it that's not gonna involve like a 3D printed piece because that's gonna break fairly easily in combat. The other uh, good advantage of this is that even with uh, fairly small gear teeth like this, which again are fairly likely to snap in full combat, uh, I can only get about a three to one reduction between this and a gear. And even when I was going real hard with that, you can only get very small amounts of reduction out of a gearing system like this, just because of the way the teeth interact and all of that kind of stuff. So, by doing it this particular way, you can get larger and larger gearing reductions, meaning you can use brushless motors without really having to worry too much about their uh, zero speed torque. And yeah, you don't actually have to worry about printing gears or anything like that. So. I was experimenting around with this a little bit and I found at my local hardware store these door stops. These are a 64 millimeter door stop. They are not perfectly, perfectly round, but they are, I think, close enough to do what I want them to do. And I also designed up this little piece which allows for a 10 millimeter piece of aluminium to be bolted onto a brushless motor. And again, this is the same concept as we've been looking at before, but of course it's none I don't have mounted onto anything. But, as I've completed work on all of that stuff, I had a quick look at this and realized that the gear reduction I was getting here wasn't huge. It's something along the lines of like eight to one, which is okay for this type of uh, application, but I figured I could do better. So, I designed up a new test piece. Now, this new test piece has one of these door stops in it. It also has a brushless motor up the back here, which is a uh, 2204, 18,000 kV, uh, sorry, 1800 kV, not 18,000 kV. And what you'll see I've done here is the tangential drive is based solely on the actual shaft of the motor itself. And it works pretty well, so you can see as I turn this wheel around, uh, I do in fact get the motor turning, but every now and again I get a hitch where there's a dead point, like right there, there's a dead point where the motor stops moving, and that is a bad thing in combat. Now, uh, by my CAD, this shaft should be 0.5 millimeters into the actual surface of this uh, particular doorstop, and I believe that this is all failing because of tolerance problems. So as I said, these are a doorstop, they're not actually designed to be a wheel, so they're probably not perfectly round. Uh, and then also there will be a little bit of tolerance in the bearings that hold the wheel in place, a little bit of tolerance in where the bolt goes through, a little bit of tolerance in where I've bolted the motor down. All of these things are going to add up together to mean that the connection between this wheel and this uh, motor shaft aren't the greatest and could potentially hit flat spots where one thing moves and the other one does not. 
This could be a bit of a problem, except for the fact that when we're gonna bolt this onto Boris in half a second, we do that together, uh, we're gonna bolt it onto Boris this way around, which means that the whole weight of the robot is actually going to push the wheel up into the shaft, meaning that this connection will be perfectly secure. So that's gonna work really, really well for this particular situation, but in Annie, I don't have the room to put the brushless motor above the wheel like this uh, without destroying Annie's ability to drive inverted. So I'm gonna have to add it at an angle, but that might mean that I need to be very, very careful on my tolerances to make sure everything works correctly. The final thing we can do is if this doesn't work out exactly as uh, planned because these door stops just aren't all that round, I can use these wheels that I've used before they aren't perfectly round either, they're just an RC car tire, but these might give me a slightly better result than these because they are at least um, a perfectly round 3D printed piece or close enough to perfectly round 3D printed piece in the middle here. And through the magic of doing the other half off camera, we're now done. We have both wheels in, and I gotta say, this is looking real good. If I don't run the standoff so you don't get the noise, uh, you can see that both motors are spinning really well when the robot drives along the ground. So the motors, uh, the wheels can drive the motors. Can the motors drive the wheels? It's time to uh, throw this down on some test platform wood and give it a bit of a spin, see if we can actually get the thing to drive properly. To say that I am surprised by that is an understatement. I am blown away. This worked way better than I thought it was going to. The first initial test with just the chassis that runs at about 1.7 kilos, it was running totally fine, no real issues with any of that. Getting a pretty decent amount of speed on a 2S battery, Annie is gonna be running a 3S battery because I always run a 3S battery in Annie. Uh, so then I decided to up the weight for the second test that you saw and the upped weight had 700 extra grams in. So this thing is running at about two and a half to somewhere between two and a half and 2.7 kilos of weight right now. And it still works and there was no real drop off in power or speed. Oh, I am just, that's insane. It has worked out so, so well. The only real issue that we had with that was the ESCs browning out when uh, we suddenly turned off of a drive because what would happen is we drive and then one motor would suddenly reverse to get the turn in and going from forwards to reverse like that causes a massive voltage spike and browns out the ESCs. But Annie is running bigger ESCs already than these, uh, so Annie should be able to handle those voltage spikes totally fine and actually run with all of that correctly which is really, really cool. Uh, so I did 
quick, do a quick check on the maths. It's something around 20 to one gear reduction when I've got the shafts running directly on these wheels. And yeah, that works amazingly well. The flat spots and stuff that I saw when I was hand spinning this, just don't seem to be an issue when there is weight on the whole thing and it's all just working. So as much as I do love this system, I do wanna try one other thing and that is to move back over to those RC car tires I showed near the beginning of this video and also move the whole wheel system. So right now, the axle is directly above the axle of the wheel. I wanna move that kind of off to the side, kind of somewhere around here, like 45 degrees or so, see if I can put it there because if it runs properly when it's over here, that means that the pressure of the wheel on the ground forcing up into the axle isn't the only thing keeping this all together and keeping this working, uh, which is gonna be important because Annie's gonna need to have it a lot further down so that she can still drive inverted. Anyway, I've got some printing to do. Let's get some stuff done and we'll uh, try this again, but I'm excited. This is mind blowing. There we have it, that worked amazingly well. This new upgraded drive system, which is closer to what I'd wanna run on Annie, also works totally fine. Also running the kind of two and a half kilo chassis. Uh, I was running about 50% stick in all of those tests, including especially this last one. I was definitely not getting up to full speed and this is only on 2S. So this whole system with uh, 3S, and running it in a bigger arena and an actual space where there's a wall so I don't have to worry about uh, yeah, going full throttle. I think this drive system is gonna work exceptionally well. And also these wheels, I can print them and design them such that they are a lot stronger than this setup is currently. Because at the moment, the setup is okay, but uh, yeah, it could be a lot stronger and uh, do a lot better than this. So we, we will go ahead and do that in uh, at the future video when we set up Annie to run this system. But for now, that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.